UFC 267 predictions and the betting breakdown as well as the weigh-in recap. Much love to everybody tuning in. Guys, smash that like button. Need at least 105 likes on this UFC 267 post weigh-in breakdown. Looking forward to talking about the fights. Things to note, we do have a cancellation. Demir Ismagulov misses weight. Uh, the fight versus uh, Magomed Mustafev is off, which is disappointing, but it is what it is. Ismagulov was way over. He was at 162 and a half. So that's something to note. We'll jump into the first fight of the night and get into it. Subscribe if you guys are new and let's start it up. First fight all the way down at the bottom. It is an exciting one for sure. Prospect to watch. Tagir Ulambekov takes on Alan Nascimento. Um, I will bring in the image from the weigh-ins here. Let's put it up on the screen. There's the guy's face and off. Obviously, there's a shirt on Ulan Bekov. I don't really think how they looked on the scales matters here. Both guys in incredible shape and ready to go. It's a flyweight fight. And very rarely do you see out of shape flyweights. Now, stylistically, you guys know if you watch Earl in the Week, I picked Ulan Bekov. But it's not like Nascimento's a bad fighter. Split decision loss to Paiva. That was on the Dana White's Contender Series. And then he, you know, has a decent tie style of striking and is definitely a bit tricky on the ground. Solid submission skill set. But Ulan Bekov brings more to the table here. He's very smooth with his kickboxing skill set. He's fast. He should be unbeaten, to be honest with you guys. And he has really good jab and patient pressure. Now, fighting a taller man here. That's going to be interesting, though. Still a half-inch reach advantage for Ulan Bekov. He brings a good wrestling game, too. I do expect him to potentially get this fight to the floor. I like Ulan Bekov. I do like win by decision. Now, looking at the betting odds, he's a strong favorite. Minus 355, plus 320. Let's see what prop would be a potential to play. I think Ulan Bekov wins a decision would be the one to go with here. It's at plus 100, plus 105 at best value. I think that's a solid bet. I do think the over is cash here. Fight goes the distance, minus 152. But I think high likelihood to gear Ulan Bekov to win. I am interested to see how he deals with the slightly taller man, but it's really not by much here. And I'm excited for Tagir to get it done. He wins here in our first fight of the night. Let's keep on moving up. Second fight. Yezong Hu versus Andrei Petrovsky. I had Hu earlier in the week as an underdog. You're about to see the face-off here. And I do believe uh, that even signif- or, uh, solidifies the pick more so. That size difference is real. Hu is a good Greco-Roman wrestler. Petrovsky's a good wrestler in his own right. Known for a questionable gas tank. Hugh doesn't have gas tank problems. He's gone the distance. Now, yes, about three years off since of his last fight. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think he's going to win by TKO late here. Third round, a tired Andre Petrovsky gets stopped in this matchup. Looking at the betting odds, of course, Hugh is a big dog. Plus 200, I think he's a great bet to the minus 200 favorite Andre Petrovsky. Looking at the prop, I would go Hugh KO TKO. That's upwards of plus 600. I do like Hugh late here. Hugh to win um, in round number three would be plus 2,000. I do think there's likelihood of round two and three. I think that Petrovsky gets tired. He gets finished by Hugh Yazong in what is an exciting matchup and a potential setup fight for Andre Petrovsky. I think he's in trouble. Let's jump to our third fight. Makwan Amir Khani, Loron Murphy. I like this matchup, and I think that definitely high possibility of Murphy winning. He is the pick here. Um, looking at the face-off, both guys very lean and good shape. Murphy does have a little bit more muscle mass. I do think his physical strength is a factor. He's going to be able to fend off the grappling attacks of Amir Khani, and Murphy standing is a different level. The striking skill set's very good. He's an athletic kickboxer with... A bright potential in the fight game. At 10-0-1, that loss to Zabiria Tahugov, not a bad, or excuse me, that draw, but I mean, he did get taken down a few times, but not a bad fight to, you know, have a draw, right? Tahugov's tough. He has a split decision to Hakeem Duwadu loss. Lerone Murphy's on the rise here. I think he beats Mr. Finland, Makwan Amir Khani in the third round. Also something to note about both southpaws. I think that could be advantageous to the striker, Lerone Murphy. I see him getting it done. I do have win KO TKO. I'm thinking third round here in a tired Makwan Amir Khani. As good shape as he's in, he does gas. Plus 260 Amir Khani's at. Minus 280 for Murphy. I like that minus 280 favorite. I do like Lerone Murphy by KO TKO. That would be the prop I'd choose. That's plus 160. 
I think that's decent value there. Um, I do see him getting it done late. You know, towards that third round, could see it late in the second as well. Solid bet for Lerone Murphy. I see him getting a nice little victory here over Makwan Amir Khani and pushing that career forward. Keep your eye on Lerone. Now the next fight, Michael Olenjechuk versus Shamil Gamzatov. I like the underdog, Michael Olenjechuk here. I've liked him all week long. Now, one thing, we'll look at the face-off. It's not like uh, Gamzatov's in bad shape. He's physically imposing without a doubt here. Got some massive traps. You can see him there. Um, you know, he's a lean guy in incredible shape. Less body fat than Olin Jaychuk. So he will be probably physically stronger in clinch situations. But can Olin Jaychuk avoid the clinch? That's going to be a big factor. I think that he will. The stand-up game for Olin Jaychuk's a lot more dynamic. He has a speed advantage. His boxing skill set's superior. I see Michael Olin Jaychuk working towards a win here by a hard-fought decision over uh, Gamzatov and beating the previously unbeaten guy after after Saturday. I don't think he'll be unbeaten. I think upset for Olin Jaychuk. But the odds are super close now. Plus 105, minus 112. You start watching a little bit of Gamzatov and you see this is a hard fight. And, and I think Olin Jaychuk decision is the pick here. Plus 290 for that. I do think we'll get over one and a half. That's minus 290. So high likelihood of that. I like Olen Jaychuk win decision over Shamil Gamzatov. And it will give him his first loss potentially here, which is going to be interesting to see. Now, if you guys haven't yet, smash that like button and let's jump to the next fight. Elizio Zaleski versus Benoit St. Denis. Short, you know, this is a hard fight for a guy coming in with... Not that same high-level experience in Benoit St. Denis. Zaleski's a really tricky fight. He's a dynamic kickboxer. He's got knockout ability. Good amount of victories. I mean, you know, he's beaten some, some top-line guys. Luchanko recently. He beat Melender, who's not amazing. Beat Venderami. But you see two losses. Leach beat him, and he lost a split to Salikov. And Salikov's a hell of a striker. We'll look at the face-off here. Benoit St. Denis, uh, more of a grappling game. Definitely going to look to get it to the floor. But he's dealing with a guy who's capable everywhere. I think this is way too much of a step-up in competition for a UFC debut. Looking at the incredible shape, definitely Zaleski has an advantage. Um, just in you know natural musculature of the frame. I think he's going to be able to fend off grappling attacks maybe even have some advantage uh you know advantageous grappling positions of his own right Elizio Zaleski he'll get the win here I do like the potential of KO TKO in round number two let's look at the odds Zaleski minus 219 Benoit Saint Denis plus 200 I don't think at 8-0 no, he's coming out here and beating Elizio Zaleski Zaleski KO TKO plus 150 I like that the most here I think he gets that stoppage knockout win and uh, he gives Benoit St. Denis his first defeat. But I think it's just too much of a step up, you know, to jump in the UFC at 25 for your debut against an experienced guy like Zaleski. Not an easy ask. And I see him catching a loss here. Now, the next one, exciting, exciting, exciting prospect. Albert Dureyev, Roman Kopilov. I like Dureyev in this matchup a lot here. We'll look at the face off. I feel like Dorev's ground game is going to be hell to deal with. Um, you look at recent loss for a copy law of submission, and that was against uh, Carl Roberson, who's a primarily striker there. You can see physique-wise, I mean, nothing crazy stands out on either side. Both guys in good shape. I think Dorev's wrestling is a serious difference maker. I think he gets the fight to the floor, beats up Kopilov. Now, is it knockout? Is it submission? I'm going to pick submission. I do think first or second round here, leaning towards the end of the first, but I definitely could see it going into the second. One thing that Dureyev's going to have to deal with is a southpaw. Could be advantageous, could potentially give him problems, but I don't think Kapilov has that takedown defense to deal with Dureyev's skill set. Should be a big win for Albert Dureyev here over uh, Roman Kapilov. He's a minus 335 favorite to the plus 305 dog. Let's see, is there any prop that stands out that we want? Dureyev inside the distance minus 140, so the value's not great. Dureyev wins by submission plus 145. Dureyev wins by KO TKOs upwards at plus 500 at best value. It's a pick between those two, but I'm going to pick the submission here. I do think he locks up a choke after ground and pounding Kapilov for a bit. Um, and that should potentially give up the neck. Potential rear naked choke as well. I definitely see Dureyev on top of him for the majority of this fight and getting the finish. Albert Dureyev. Let's keep on moving up. Zubiria Tuhugov, Ricardo Hamosh. Exciting matchup. Very exciting matchup. I feel like this is going to be a hard fight, though, for Hamosh, who's a good prospect. I like his skill set. I think that 
He's not an easy guy to fight. I think he's he's top of the line for sure as far as striking goes. But when this fight gets to the floor, it's going to be Tuhugov's fight, and it will get to the floor. Hamosh makes some technical errors that we've seen, though. It seems like he's correcting them. Still, Tuhugov's wrestling is a difference maker. I think he gets on top. He also does have good striking, and that will set up the takedowns. Hamosh slick with his jiu-jitsu for sure, um, but doesn't have that same physical strength of Tuhugov. I don't think he submits him. And also, striking-wise, I don't think he has the finishing power to put down a guy like Tuhugov, who sat in there with Hakeem Duwadu, who's top-of-the-line big hitter in that 145-pound division. I got Tuhugov winning. I do think he'll get a second-round stoppage, breaking Hikardo Hamosh here. But keep your eye on Hikardo, though. He's only 26. I think he has a bright future. Reminds me a bit of Charles Oliveira when he was young. So, I mean, who knows? Could eventually be champion, but I don't see him winning against the Hugov here. Minus 158, plus 150. I like that minus 158 for Zubiria to Hugov. Looking at the props, the Hugov KO plus 450. The Hugov wins inside of the distance. Let's see what that's sitting at. That's plus 310. They're expecting more so decision. Potentially could go all three. Don't love the props as much in this fight, but I do like Tohugov, KOTKO in that second round. Let's keep on moving up. It's the featured prelim of the night. Amanda Hibas versus Verna Jendudova. This is a really big fight for both girls. Loser gets sent back. Winner gets sent more so to the top of the division. I think that Verna has a chance here. I like her as the underdog. I think there's possibility that she goes out there and pulls off this upset by a hard-fought decision over Amanda Hibas. She's a little bit wild and reckless. I think that could potentially be advantageous against Hibas, who I would say is more of the technician. Grappling-wise, I think it's competitive. I like Verna's chances in this fight. She's the underdog sitting at plus 145. Hibas minus 152. I like Verna. I do think win by decision. Verna Jendudova win by a decision is plus 290. Fight going the distance minus 200 so it is expected to go the distance i think jandu doba gets it done more volume and a tricky striking style and pressure game to deal with for he boss i got jandu doba getting the upset victory here a lot of pro experience too 17 and 2 versus 10 and 2 it's a seven fight advantage and that's seven real fights there jandu doba's tough and i'd say definitely a bit underrated but let's jump to the main card smash that like button if you guys have not yet subscribe if you're new and turn those post notifications on so you do not miss a video magomed and Kalayev. Volkan Uzdemir. I love this fight. This is a fight that I've been waiting all week long for. As soon as it got announced, I knew I was going to be excited for it. Now seeing it coming up, I'm pumped. I got Ankalaev winning. I think that potentially mixing in the wrestling is going to be a big factor here. If he sits toe-to-toe -to -toe with Uzdemir, he could get touched on the chin. Now, Ankalaev controls range well. He has a good kickboxing game. He's very patient. I do think he's hard to hit. I don't think Uzdemir is going to have a great ton of success striking, but it only takes one. I expect Ankalaev to mix in the wrestling, and that will make his striking work even better in this matchup, making uh, Uzdemir Demir potentially shell up more, not be as insane with the volume and not go as reckless. I like Ankalaev. Both guys in good physical shape. I don't think the physiques matter in this matchup, though. I think Ankalaev, superior fighter, decision victory over Volkan Uzdemir. Not going to lie, though. I like Paulo Costa, Volkan Uzdemir next, regardless of the outcome of this fight. I think that'd be very entertaining. Minus 280, plus 265. I'm liking the tough Russian Magomed Ankalaev. Decision for Ankalaev plus 240. I think that's a very likely outcome here. I see him potentially controlling Uzdemir. Uzdemir is not an easy guy to put away. Um, Ankalaev, not a guy that needs to go for the finish. He'll work towards hard-fought decisions, and I see him getting it done in this fight versus Volkan to start off this sweet main card. The next one, another amazing fight. Li Jiliang Leach versus Hamzat Chimaev. I like Hamzat here, but it's not an easy fight. He had some trouble with the scales. Missed weight initially, had a second chance, came in at 166, and then they weigh him in a third time at 171. So definitely was potential towel gating there. But hey, he made the weight. He's ready to go. Looking at Leach, incredible shape. Hamzat as well. Am I concerned about Hamzat's COVID issues? No, I'm not going to be. But when the fight happens, you never know. Leach is an animal. He's coming to fight. But Hamzat should run him over and stop him in the first or second round on the ground. Now, does he get the KO, TKO? I'd expect that. Could potentially lock in a submission. He's got to be cautious striking with Leech. Leech is an explosive puncher. He has a nasty left overhand. Hamzat on the opposite side is a slick kickboxer with incredible wrestling. I see him getting this fight to the floor, and I see Hamzat winning by TKO. Looking at the odds, they're strong, strong. Minus 350. 
plus 485. Hamzat's a massive favorite in this matchup, and minus 350 is not a common play, uh, you know, price tag. It's over at FanDuel. You can find them all the way up at minus 1,000, depending where you're at. Hamzat Chimaev. Plus 150 KOTKO KO. inside the distance is minus 172 at best value. So it's expected to be an inside the distance fight here. And I do think Hamzat does get it done over Leach in what should be a breakout performance for him. Biggest fight of his career, especially in the welterweight division. That's a that's a serious fight. Let's jump to the next one. Heavyweights. Alexander Drago Volkov versus Marcin Tybura. I like Volkov in this spot. Pull up the face off. Uh, Tybura is not an easy matchup, though. He's a tricky grappler. Incredible chin. Thing with Volkov, not a guy that needs the knockout. He's here to go long. He's going to be ready for three rounds. He's a patient kickboxer. Good takedown defense. He's a big, big man. I mean, you look at the size, not a crazy, crazy difference in height, but a good three inches or so. Uh, Tibura listed at six foot three. You know, Volkov six foot seven. Only a three inch reach advantage, but the boxing skill set and really just kickboxing skill set overall, the dynamic striker is definitely Volkov here. Tibura is okay with his stand-up, but he wants to grapple. He'll take your punches and look to get on top, get some ground and pound going, potentially work towards a submission. 263 pounds is a strong weight. That's what Volkov weighed in at. His opponent, 249. I think that weight advantage and the height is going to be a big factor here. And I do see Volkov getting it done. I do think decision. Minus 280 for Volkov, plus 255 for Tibura. Volkov decision, plus 230. That would be my pick. I do think over one and a half, minus 200, extremely likely here. It's a near guarantee. I think the fight does go the distance. That's a plus 120 tag. We'll go with Alexander Drago Volkov for the win. Let's keep on moving up to the featured prelim, or excuse me, the featured prelim, the featured bout of the night. Islam Mahachev versus Dan Hooker. Great matchup. Hasbulla is going to be in there supporting Islam. So this is going to be an interesting night. I'm pretty pumped. I have Islam winning. I think the wrestling will be the real difference maker here. Dan Hooker is a dangerous striker, though. You cannot count out Dan. He throws nasty knees. Could potentially catch Islam with something. Both guys in incredible shape, as expected, with top-of-the-line lightweights in the world. I like the chances of Islam decision. I think it's extremely likely that he gets Dan Hooker to the floor, controls from top, and works towards a, a hard decision, but he will get it done. Dan Hooker's best chances would be a flash KO. I just don't think it's all that likely. Islam Mahachev for the win over Dan Hooker. Mahachev's a strong favorite, minus 495 to plus 480 underdog Dan Hooker. If we're talking about props, I like the decision. That's plus 105 at best value. Fight goes the distance, minus 120. I think it's going to be Mahachev with the decision win. Hooker, if he was to get the KO, you can find it up at plus 925. If you want to sprinkle prop it for the small possibility of an upset, you definitely could. But I think strong confidence, Mahachev, for the win in the featured bout of the night. Co-main event time. Title on the line. It's the interim belt, but really is it the interim belt? It is Petr Jan, who I believe is the best bantamweight on the planet, taking on Corey Sanhagen, who might be the number two bantamweight on the planet. Obviously, he has a loss to Aljamain Sterling. We'll eventually see that fight again. We'll eventually see Jan Sterling again. The winner of this fight fights him for the true title, even though this is a real interim belt here. This is intense, intense matchmaking. I got Petr Jan. I think that he will get it done. He's a nasty boxer. He's super fast when he gets inside, light on his feet. He's also got a great grappling game from the clinch. His throws are fantastic. Good control from the top. On the opposite side, Sandhagen, excellent kickboxing. Extremely unorthodox and high-level game. He's got the reach advantage of three inches. He's got the height advantage of three, excuse me, four inches. There's... Some serious opportunity for Sanhagen here. If he can find his range, potentially could land you know, a flash knockout type strike. But if we're talking about going distance, we're talking about going after it. I think Jan has the defense to defend any crazy attacks. And I think he'll find a way inside, touching up Sanhagen with the boxing. And I think he will work towards a potential late stoppage. Fourth, fifth round. Could even see this fight going all five. But I do see Petr Jan with the win getting a belt back, but not his true belt, even though interim belt, he'll be fighting for that real title um, very soon, whenever Aljo's back and ready to go. Plus 190 for Sanhagen, minus 195 for Jan. I like Jan's chances here. I do think over two and a half, extremely likely, minus 137. Uh, KO, TKO for Jan would be plus 245. Jan decision, plus 168. 
Could Sanhagen have cardio issues? I doubt it. Even though he took the fight on short notice, I think he'll be in incredible shape. But I do think Jan does get the victory. Let's see, Jan, if he were to win in round number four, plus 16.75, great value on that. I do think it's going to be a KOTKO for Petr Jan. I do think he's going to beat Sanhagen getting that interim belt. And then we got to get that rematch between him and Aljamain Sterling after the disqualification, illegal knee, not even a, a true loss. Jan is a monster, and I see him beating Corey Sanhagen, which should be a pretty good fight. Let's jump to the main event. If you guys haven't yet, smash the hell out of that like button. It is the battle of OGs. This is pretty crazy, right? You got a 40-year-old man, 40 what? I think 42 years of age now, Glover Teixeira, taking on a man who's 38. Older guys in the fight game, but towards the tippy top. Superb amounts of experience. I have... Jan here. You look at the face-off, both guys intense, ready to go, but a lot of respect all week. Birthday gift from Jan Blahovitz to Glover Teixeira. So there's a lot of love. These guys are self-proclaimed on both sides, friends with one another. So it is a great matchup. I think we're going to see warfare. Jan's kickboxing is a bit more dynamic, but Glover has a definite chance with his boxing. And if he gets on top, Arm triangle, watch for it. But the likelihood is not all that high. I think Jan's going to stay on his feet. I think he's going to outstrike Glover Teixeira and stop him towards the third round. Now, looking at the betting lines, you see strong favorite status for Blahovitz. Minus 275 is about best value you'll find to plus 270 for Glover at best value. We're talking about props. Do you want to bet a ton on it? I would say maybe not. You know, I think Jan Blahovitz is in for a tough fight, even though I see him beating Teixeira. Blahovitz, if he got it to KOTO, plus 115. So the value isn't great. But let's look at a sprinkle prop, a Hail Mary. Teixeira submission, plus 700. That's not a bad sprinkle prop right there. He definitely has a chance of potentially locking up a submission. Could get a TKO that's plus 650. I got Blahovitz for the win, but it's not an easy fight. He should get the W over Glover Teixeira. But Glover's never going down easy. The boxing's extremely good. The wrestling's very good. Overall, Glover has a tricky skill set for Jan Blahovic stylistically, but I feel like Jan does get it done. I think the kicking game is also a true difference maker. Expect some body kicks here. Overall, pretty solid UFC card. I'm super pumped for it. I do want to send you guys off with some potential parlays to play here. So let's talk about a parlay and let's get it in. All right, what is... A parlay that is a high likelihood casher. I like Megomed and Kalayev a lot here. I like Albert Dorev. That's minus 148 if we go with those two. Now, are you feeling adding in the underdog Hugh Yazong? Plus 393 would be you know, a farther stretch parlay adding in a dog. I think Hugh is high likelihood of an upset. If you need more so all favorites, Makachev, minus 106 though. The price tag isn't great. Hamza, price tag isn't great. Minus 102. Maybe you want to add in Alexander Volkov for plus 125. He matches up well versus Tibera. I would lean towards this three-fighter parlay, uh, Ankalaev, Dorea, Volkov. I do think Hamzat wins. I do think uh, Petr Jan wins. I do have a strong feeling that Makachev wins. And as I said, Hugh Yazong is the, the true dog of the week. That's plus 1204 if you were just going nuts to just throw 10 bucks and try to get, you know, 120 back at you. Be cautious with the parlays. Two three-fighter maxes for, like, true parlays. If you're looking to just play some fun props, there's definitely possibility overall solid card one that i am super excited to see it's gonna be ufc 267 can't wait for it smash that like button keep it locked in and mma experts i will have a full post fight show breakdown for ufc 267 so keep your eye out for that i definitely want to start um you know enhancing the uh post fight coverage on the channel so let me know if you guys are going to tune in definitely do so let me know what you thought of the predictions i uh, hope you guys really enjoyed i enjoyed talking about this card all week long and i can't wait to see it finally go down tomorrow much love to all my people tuning in thank you all so much smash that like button subscribe turn those post notifications on share the video if you think somebody you know might like it much love to all my people, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.